What's going on everyone? I'm Matt from Universal Audio and today we're going to be taking a look at the Lexicon 224 Reverb. This famously lush digital reverb has been a studio staple since the 80s and can be heard on everything from hit records by Talking Heads and U2 to Vangelis' Blade Runner soundtrack. The 224 is a true workhorse reverb and features a versatile selection of programs including halls, plates, chambers, and more all using the same exact algorithms and processor code from the original hardware for perfect recreations of their legendary sound. You can use it to add subtle space and depth or push it to extremes to get atmospheric, dreamlike sounds and everything in between. Just like all of our plugins, there are tons of great factory and artist presets to get you started and the 224's slider-based interface makes it super easy to further shape the tone and timing to fit your tracks. Let's dive in and see what it can do. So for this first example, let's check out the Lexicon 224 on a lead vocal. I've got the 224 loaded on a return track in Ableton Live and I'm setting my lead vocal track to it. I've got the smooth Vox Hall preset pulled up which is gonna give me a nice full sound and a classic long 224 tail. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. When the weekend comes, gonna go out. Never slow down, never slow down. Cause we're young in love in a ghost town. Never slow down. Never slow down. So that's a perfect example of the classic 224 tail. It really fills out the sound in a nice way and adds some sustain to pretty much anything you run through it. Now down on the bottom of the interface, you see these six sliders, which are your main controls for shaping the tone and timing of the reverb. First, you have multi-band decay controls. You can control the decay for the bass band, the mid band, and the treble separately. You also have a crossover control that sets the crossover point between the bass and mid sliders, as well as depth and pre-delay controls. You can really use these sliders to get in there and shape the sound of the reverb. In this case, I want to make the reverb a little bit tighter around the vocal. So I'm going to play this example again, mess with some of these sliders and see what we can get here. Let's take a listen. When the weekend comes, gonna go out. Never slow down, never slow down. Cause we're young in love in a ghost town. Never slow down, never slow down. So I was able to use that mid slider to shorten the time of the reverb and tighten it around the vocal a little bit. And then I used the treble decay slider to roll off some of the high frequencies. The treble decay doesn't actually control the timing of the reverb, it just controls the cutoff frequency, the low pass filter to roll off some of those high frequencies and make it sit a little bit better. So with all these controls, I have a lot of power for shaping the sound of the reverb. Now I can also use the pre-delay controls to put some space between the original signal and the reverb. And a really cool trick with the 224 is you can actually lower the bass and mid bands and then turn up the pre-delay to pretty much turn any reverb into a slapback type effect. Let's take a listen to what that sounds like. When the weekend comes, gonna go out. Never slow down, never slow down. Cause we're young in love in a ghost town. Never slow down, never slow down. So that's a really cool way to thicken up a vocal without having to double track it. All right, so for this next example, let's take a listen to the Lexicon 224 on some drums. In this case, I have a drum loop that I'm sending to the 224 on a return bus again. I have Dave Isaac's drum room preset loaded up. And before I start tweaking any controls, let's hear what that sounds like. Cool, so this is already sounding pretty good, but the reverb is reacting to the kick drum a little more than I'd like. So I'm gonna play with the bass slider and see if I can fix that. Let's take another listen. So by using that bass slider, I was able to pretty much remove the kick drum from the reverb altogether, which really tightened up the sound. And it's especially useful when you're working with a drum loop like this and you don't have tracked out drums. So next, let's take a look at the depth control. This sets the size of the room that the Lexicon is modeling, and when you crank it up, you'll start to get some really cool reflections that fill out the sound in a really nice way. Let's take a listen to that. So by raising that depth control, it introduced some reflections that's really cool for filling out rhythmic sources like drums. It also changes my perception of the depth of the room. It pushes the source farther back into the room and gives me some space between the source and the reverb. It's really cool. For this next example, let's check out the Lexicon 224 on some synth. Now, in addition to the factory and artist presets that you get, you also have preset settings directly from Lexicon for each program. 
So I'll come in here and select the small hall A program and you'll notice some of the controls change. These are basically the preset settings that Lexicon has determined are best for that program or at least a good starting point. And these are the same preset settings that you get on the original hardware as well. So let's take a listen to how this sounds and I'll tweak the reverb a little bit to get the timing that I want. So that sounds pretty cool. I've got a nice long tail, which is what I was looking for in this case. Now, you'll notice in the interface there's this immediate button. And what that does is it locks in the current settings so I can audition different programs without changing the timing of the reverb. So I'm gonna play this example again and I'll scroll through a few of the different programs so you can hear the differences in each one. So you heard, as I cycled through those different programs, the timing of the reverb didn't change too much, but the tone and the character of the reverb did. Those plates really thickened up the sound in a cool way, where the chamber had a nice, light, airy sound. This is a really cool way to customize presets. You can call up a preset to get the timing you want, lock in the settings with the immediate button, and then cycle through the programs to get the sound you want. So as we've seen, the 224 is a flexible digital reverb that adds iconic lexicon tone and decay to anything that you run through it. Check out the artist presets for a bunch of great starting points, and don't be afraid to tweak them to shape the sound of your tracks. Make sure you subscribe to the Universal Audio YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any other future videos. I'm Matt from Universal Audio, and I'll see you in the next one.